Hi, my name is Roland and on my channel we are doing all sorts of uh, DIY projects around photovoltaic, battery storage, controlling of those separate uh, systems like power wall or a battery monitor. So from time to time we are also doing electronics. About three months ago I have started with a very small electronic project which was necessary for my two uh, microcontrolled devices which is on one side the power wall controller the other on the other side is the battery monitor and because they are connected to the internet they needed something like a so-called external watchdog watchdog is a very small device which is responsible to get a microcontroller which might stuck from time to time back into operation. So how does that work? A microcontroller, as long as it is running, is always sending a live pulse to the watchdog. And if the watchdog does not receive such a live pulse for, some, for a certain time, it would reset the microcontroller and restart the program which is run by the microcontroller. When it comes to Internet of Things, I found out that those applications require sometimes a very long delay from the microcontroller just to stand by and wait for an answer from an Internet server. And those delays can be sometimes up to 25 seconds. So for 25 seconds the microcontroller would just wait, not do anything. So it couldn't also send a, a live pulse. For an outside viewer, it would look like the microcontroller is stuck. While it is not, it's just waiting. Microcontrollers typically do have internal watchdogs, which you can use. But those are limited to a certain amount of time. And the maximum here on the Adrenos, on the Mega, is 8 seconds. So this is much too short to be used as a a watchdog for my application here. That's why I was forced to develop more or less an external uh, device which is taking over the job. There's two ways of achieving this. One would be using a different microcontroller which is watching over the first one and the first one is of course have to watch also over the second one. So two microcontrollers which are watching each other and if one of them fails, the other one would always reset it. And the other method is just to use a very specific circuit, a timer circuit. Mostly they are based on the NE555 chip. That's a timer chip. If some certain timing would be exceeded, would then also trigger some some pins and which could be then used to pull down uh, the reset pin of the microcontroller. And that's the way I uh, wanted to go. I was looking in the internet, in the YouTube about ways how to do this. And I had to modify uh, the circuit to meet my needs. And then I developed the board. And you saw it already on one video. I had one board designed, but that did not work. That time I did not know why it did not work, I was using my small oscilloscope to look into the internal processes and there was a problem in the timing circuit. So I suspected that uh, there is a problem maybe with the timer chip. So I have uh, actually ordered then another PCB which was completely based on through hole components because through hole components I have here at home and they are easy to get in any country. Uh, so I have uh, built a board with these ones and it gave me the opportunity actually to change all these components and fine tune the circuit. But there was still a problem, actually the same problem as before, but this time because I could spend a lot of uh, time with the circuit and I could change a lot of things, I found the culprit found out why this circuit actually did not work. And the reason why it did not work was this small uh, signal 
MOSFETs, the 2N7000, and those MOSFETs internally just burned up just by applying one second of heat during soldering. So after I knew what was the problem, I then designed the last uh, board, which is a hybrid more or less. The timing circuit is through hole, so it can be changed easily. And the switching circuit is two a double MOSFET ICs. So here I can show you on the second version of the boards. All these are working boards, but just set up with different components. And this one actually was running now my power wall for more, more than one and a half months. And it only reset the power wall maybe once during that period. But as you can see, instead of using the small signal MOSFETs, I placed these big uh, power MOSFETs here instead and it worked like it should. Well, on this board, you see I have soldered the MOSFETs just at the very end and I removed the heat here by holding it with, the, with pliers so that the top here did not get hot and this worked also. So it was kind of unfortunate those MOSFETs have been Chinese reproduction of course and the quality uh, very very bad. Okay what we are going to do now is uh, take these new PCBs and quickly build one of the uh, watchdog timers and then we are going to test it. So this time I also took the chance and I switched from the 0603 sized component to the 0805. So this makes a DIY soldering of SMD components much, much easier. Start with the ICs. These are the double MOSFET ICs. One is a N channel, B channel, and the other one is a double N channel combination. Once you get used to it, it's actually nice to work with SMD. But of course, as long as the components are not too small, I'm going to put the small components, the di diode and the resistors. Okay, I started with the true hole components already. The resistors are in place. Now I will put the timer chip. A 10 nanofarad capacitor. I have two pro points for the oscilloscope. One is ground, one is the timing, timing circuit. And this gives us the chance just to easily connect the oscilloscope and test the circuit. So every watchdog is tested before it's used. Then comes the four pin header. The connection to the main board. Okay, the last thing is the timing capacitor, an electrolytic capacitor with 100 microfarads. So the size of this capacitor is actually responsible for the timing, together with, with those uh, resistors there. Give the size of the capacitor or the resistors is increased then the timing would also increase and that is it the watchdog is finished well, it looks nice and shiny brand new like factory okay so this is now our test setup we have our laptop we have a breadboard with a nano on it then the watchdog and then the DSO 150, the DIY oscilloscope. 
So I'm running a sketch here where we make a few resets at the beginning and then 25 seconds delay. So this one, that period the watchdog has to survive. Then another short reset and then uh, a long delay in which at some point the watchdog have to reset the microcontroller. And we can, as you can see here, perfectly look how the capacitor in the timer circuit is charged and when the reset will then be done. So let's start with the test. Open the serial monitor so we can closely monitor this. The microcontroller is restarted and it did a few resets already. So here we can see the small uh, peaks there, those are the short time resets and then here we can already see this will be now uh, the 25 seconds pause uh, one division here is five seconds so you can see five divisions 25 seconds and then the capacitor is uh, pulled down again to ground we have another reset and now at the next time at some point the watchdog will have to uh, activate we will see that when the curve is going the other way opposite way just uh, slowly discharging again must be any moment now and the watchdog here already the light, the light went out and here on the curve we can see the capacitor is starting to discharge watchdog already activated again and started the program so it started with the next pull down we can actually hold now as soon we are reaching the edge there and then we can check how long it took for the real reset And from there to there it's eight divisions so it took 40 seconds more or less exactly this watchdog now gives the microcontroller 40 seconds time to solve every problem and if it does not then it will be reset I think 40 seconds that's a quite a good time uh, too much longer would not be really necessary and yeah we can keep the watchdog as it is with these uh, components here and I will uh, show you the schematics again uh, so that you can see uh, the layout and uh, all the values of the components. Okay, so here it is now inside the battery monitor and the next one will then go into the power wall. Right, so this is now the final layout of the schematics. So we have the timer chip, the charging uh, resistors here and the charging capacitor and then we have two uh, ICs for the MOSFETs. One is a NP type and the other one is a double N type. All the values are updated. Okay, so that's so far it and this, the circuit is tested and functioning. The project with a lot of hiccups is finally finished. So if you need one of these tiny helpers, you can leave me a note or send an email to my email address, which I show you in the video now. There is a few, three ICs on the board and stuff like that, so the cost would be about $5 plus shipping if you just want me to put it in a simple uh, envelope that would not uh, cost a lot more so maybe around six dollars and uh, you would have a watchdog which can help you in especially in iot uh, setups where a long uh, waiting periods are happening and uh, your controller can still stay safe 
I would say that was it. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, thank you for watching. Please uh, like the video, comment, subscribe to the channel. We still only have less than 100 subscribers, so it would be nice maybe if we get a few more. So thank you very much and I see you next time.